Hello, my beautiful people out there. Day. We don't come again to collect on our no say. We don't see some traces or some certain things when we say it a worry. Yol edoshe, and for this yol edoshe matter, we don't see the trace of bipolar disorder for inside yol edoshe matter. When we talk, say we see the trace of bipolar. Now, because of the description of bipolar, what did it make people do? And we get net, get to know, say, it is in different form. We get one of our sister when we say, he get this the same bipolar issue. But then, I won't reveal your edoshe own given. So that when I go compare them with this our sister own, when we say, he come outside to come let us know, say, Bipolar is the real. Make on her listen. Make on her tell us whether not be the same thing. Now you'll attention they go through. Guys, watch this. We go come back to come let on her see how everything it take work out. Ladies and gentlemen, humbly I stand before you to discuss a topic that our society discusses in whispers. Mental illness. Many thanks to Sir Kosfini, who has endorsed this conversation by giving my team and I some precious talk minutes on this prestigious altar. With me somewhere in the congregation are my people wearing this please come my name is charity i am popularly known as chacha i am a wife a mother nollywood actress and founder menticulous people foundation thank you i turned 35 four months ago But for 33 years, out of that 35, I had a sickness that I was unaware of. My parents were unaware. I was unaware. I interpreted most of it as who I am. My personality is who I am. But it goes beyond just who I am. In 2018, at the Ritz Hotel Enugu, New Heaven, I was lodged in a suit with my husband and my two children at that time. And then one day, it happened. I went mad. Later on, I discovered it's called a maniac episode. But just like in the movies, I went bonkers, crazy. I began to throw away every of our belongings, clothes, shoes, bags, the children's toys. I vandalized the hotel properties. The suit in the Palo area had three large cushions. I ripped it all apart using a tiny knife. It was nothing but madness. That madness was contained in just that room by my husband who was wearing only the clothes that he had on when I was trying to wear everything. Same goes for my children. That incident was so intense that what I needed was a trip to the hospital. But I didn't go to the hospital because my husband and I, who is seated here with me, supporting me. <laughs> Thank you, please rise. We attributed it to demonic attack, voodoo, marine spirit, somebody not somewhere. Now, what I owe, we kept saying. Oh, it's Nollywood. You know you can get really envious in that industry. Oh, it's my father and my mother. They never supported this marriage. Oh, I think it's your family. I think it's you, my husband. I think it's you. Because since I married you, my life just started going haywire. It was always one suspicion after another, one false accusation after another. I survived the writ, but I had yet another maniac episode in 2020 here in Delta State, Asaba. I was on the laptop writing script after script. Writing is my hobby. My husband was on his way to Lagos to sign a contract with our company, between our company and yet another production company. And 
before I could realize what was going on with me, I went mad again. And I began to destroy things around the house. I broke televisions, chandelier lights. I burnt all my clothes and my children's clothes. Just like I did in Enugu, I reduced everything that we owned to trash. And no, it didn't take one day. It was three to four days intense madness. On the fourth day, I didn't eat at all. I was only drinking water. I felt I had, I felt I had superpowers. I felt I was receiving a message from the divine. Or I felt like somebody was manipulating me because there was two entities all of a sudden. There was me watching me that couldn't stop that me in action. They had to bound me hands and legs to the hospital. And then I was still, just like in the movies, crazy. It was now at the hospital, First Delta American Hospital here in Asaba, that Dr. Isio Mokoba, alongside a psychiatrist, Dr. Nebe, diagnosed me of bipolar disorder. I had heard that name in the movie, but because I'm an actor, that name seemed fictitious. It felt like a name that they had to come up with to buttress a character or a characterization. I didn't take that news pleasantly because it was not a pleasant news. Because what do you mean? Do you know who I am? Georgia. I am way too beautiful. <laughs> way too talented. Way too brilliant to have what they call in my area. A little bit of scor 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 And that news came accompanied by yet another news that I found very impressive. All of a sudden, they said I was pregnant. We weren't expecting a baby, but I love babies. So I was like, yeah. I can't get away. I don't know what you're saying, bipolar. What? And so when they gave me drugs to take, when I went home, I was flushing the drugs down the toilet. I had a friend, I still have a friend in the U.S. who bought me pills worth thousands of dollars. It was a six-month supply for the disorder. But my head didn't agree with that news. So I called her and said, I won't take them. The Lord told me in my sleep that those drugs are not for me. I'm fine. And then I now attached the news of the pregnancy to my denial, saying that if I keep taking these drugs, the tendencies of the baby in my stomach coming out as imbecile is there, so no, I'm not going to take it. And so I went through that pregnancy without my pills. But I never stopped going mad. Only this time it was much more madness. But then, when I had my baby and resumed work, the stress of the work began to jam my brain again. I had yet another episode. Just like in 2020, I had another episode in 2021. I had that episode in 20. Every year, there's always episodes. People manic and manic. My returning subscribers, may God bless you. I appreciate every bit of your subscription to Gossip Headquarters. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I greet you all according to your time and your location, depending on where you are listening to us from today. We go continue, but I know say on the enjoy ram. I know go feel too and make I know salute my returning subscriber. So guys, in case if not the first time you they come across gossip headquarters, make you hit the like button, subscribe, turn on the post notification, so that any time when we drop cheese like this, you go then notified and you will be the first to watch. Make I leave on make on continue to enjoy ram. I make on not forget. The part two, I go drop them for the next post. Enjoy the rest of the video. I will see you again in our next video. Bye. This particular episode, I burnt all our wedding photos, all our vital business documents, destroyed all our clothes. We had no clothes again. It's what I do. I, I did that every time. Not anymore, but it was a habit. Many times people would not see me on social media. They imagine I'm living an introverted life. While that is true, I've been living in the world in my head. I didn't even have clothes to make appearances anymore because I wrecked everything that I had. Until I had a last manic. The last manic that I eventually wandered off. On the streets, many are raving mad. Naked. But there are people who are not naked yet, but they are mad. This particular manic, between April, May, June, July... Of course, I burnt clothes, destroyed things, but I wandered off. 4 a.m. in the morning, my family were asleep, and I wore my clothes. I sneaked out of the house. 
immediately I crossed the gate, and I take off. I was running. Nobody was pushing me, but I felt like somebody's trying to kill me. Hallucinations, delusions. It was all in my head. I ran to Lagos. It wasn't enough. I ran to Ghana. Not Bali. Not Kweli. Not Kiji, Bologna Island. It is what it is, Pastor. Yes. It took the grace of God. God loves me to remind me of home. Because I love my husband and my four children at home, including a one-year-old. Love one now, but... But then... I suddenly remembered home and I felt like, okay, the reason I ran is because this man here, I was convinced in my head that he wanted to use me to do rituals. The nature of my work doesn't support the sickness that I have. I make pretense for a living. Mm -hmm. People pay me to, pre to be pretending to be who I am not. And I've done it for over a decade plus. So I'm a guru at it. But all that pretense began to backfire on me because I began to lose myself in the midst of it all. Characters that I do not recognize were now jumping out of me. I'd come on social media and write nonsense. Non-existent things. And because I'm popular, people take me seriously. They'll take those words that I said seriously. They didn't even know I'm talking nonsense. They didn't know. <laughs> they didn't know. No, I wouldn't come out of the and that was the worst thing you could do to me then. If you say, I could fight you. Because what do you mean? What ogu? Insult yourself there. On and on it went. I came back and they bonded me yet again to the hospital. <laughs> this time, Dr. Val's hospital. What's the name again? Ken Crest Hospital. That's the fourth hospital now. One hospital after the other. And it's not like our bills were ever cheap. Ah, It's designer sickness, yo. Uh, bills used to be 700,000, 800,000. And it's not just the pills, that the pills are not even that expensive. It's the aftercare, the psychotherapy that they used to give me that I was still combating. I shaved my children's hair. Anybody that knows me here on social media know my children. They are my greatest asset alongside this man. If you know me on social media, you've never seen me in a private jet. Look, I have a man. I don't have a Wrangler. I don't have those expensive cars. I still will, but the expensive uh, treasure that I had, still have, is my husband and my children. <laughs> but trust bipolar to make a mess of my most treasured, most treasured possessions. If you are bipolar, when you're having an episode, your favorite things, your favorite people become your worst enemies, your worst things. It's two poles. It shifts from this pole to that pole. And it will stay there for a long time. I suicide bombed my marriage on social media twice. The first one, I couldn't account for it. But the second one, I'm a mama. Because I was very angry. Trust the devil to use vices. Like anger. I was angry for nothing. I felt like this man was ganging up with the doctors to lie to me. Because he has a plan to take my lock. <laughs> On that day that they were driving me to the hospital, I made a big scene. I was screaming, kidnapper! Help me, he's a kidnapper! And then people were stopping to help. But when they got to where we were, they realized, that's your husband. And then he would tell them, she's not fine, I'm taking her to hospital. That brought up more aggression in me. Like, hi! I promised myself, Chego, the Kanago DJ. Kanago DJ hospital, I'll stop marrying you so that you will not be bundling me to these hospitals that you keep bundling me to and they, they will stop giving me these drugs that I hate. I went to the police. I, I petitioned against my husband to the commissioner of police. <laughs> they made him sign on, an undertaking to stay away from me. Oh. Because clearly he was my biggest trigger. I left him. I left the children. I went to a hotel. I stayed in the hotel for two months. From there I was going to work and coming back. One day, like film, I began to ask myself, I've been in this hotel room for long. Why am I here? Oh, wait a minute. I wrote some stuff on Instagram. Oh, man, I did it again. Where are my children? I remember when I was dragging custody with my lawyer. I told the children are on holidays in the village. Oh, Jesus. Oh. 
I did it again. Then I began to call my husband's phone. He wasn't picking. He was already terrified of me. But then I sent him a long voice note on WhatsApp. He said, baby, my name is Yala. My name is Petegum. Just allow me to come back. I'll be taking my medicine. I promise. And then he said to me, that's just the point I wanted you to get. Because what is happening to you has happened to many people. It's happening to many people. So you don't let it ruin you. Just recently, there's the popular IVD story. If anybody followed it. Bimbo is late now. But I recognize myself a lot in Bimbo who is dead. All that aggression and violence and endless nagging. It's a mental imbalance. Who in a bamba like that? You can't be so crazy. You pull kerosene or fuel around about your house. And then you put it on fire and expect it not to burn. It will burn, but it will burn you too. I have this injury to show for all the times that I smashed, I smashed floor ties, was breaking windows so I could jump out. Church, I was go. <laughs> I'm just trying to say that so many people are, are here listening to me and they're just like me. Some of them know about it, some don't know. So I'm bringing you the same gospel that Jesus brought to the people. Consciousness awareness, knowingness. What you don't know is your mountain. From the moment I realized that bipolar uh, makes me unstable in my moods and in my dealings with people, I began to make conscious efforts to be a better person. I started to take my pills, which some people that are mentally unstable should take. Now, the pills repairs brain cells because my brain for 33 years faced a lot of damage. Imagine being sick and not taking drugs. You only get worse. If you have anger issues, the kind that never goes away until you take out your anger or vexation on something or someone, my dear, you have a mental problem. If you feel so...